Hey, what's up, guys? This is Chuck, and I'm in the garden. And today is the very first day that I'm doing garden tours for the 2021 season. And so we're gonna start in the City Lights Garden, which is my very first garden that I started with, and my very first love where I first um, got very, I don't wanna say I got into gardening, but I got very serious about it. Before I just did it, as a hobby or, you know, just, I always had pots of peppers or flowers, things like that. But this is where I actually began to escalate the situation <laughs> and take it, um, take it into a higher level every season and, you know, try different things and do, um, test my limits and see, see what I could do and see how, how I learned, um, from the previous season and other gardeners and and so this is this is where this journey began so i'm excited to show you this very first garden and this garden and most of the gardens um during the pandemic a mask is required at all times when you're in the garden and that's for everyone's safety and that's why i have a mask on right now um so um i will start this tour so in this bed, I have garlic. I have several different varieties of garlic. I planted them in the fall, and I did a I, I did a video on how I did that, and I've done progress videos. And in the fall, I released how to plant garlic, um, so you can follow along. But this is this is my garlic. This is my market garlic. So this garlic will be ready the end of this month, and then I'll be able to take it to my markets. I have some pansies growing in here. And this is a solar light that I got from my mom's house. And so, um, it's a piece of home. This is some cilantro that reseeded itself. A couple of weeds. We've had lots of rain. And then there's this sunflower right here in the corner. It comes back every single year and it gets taller than this whole gazebo. And um, I let it grow. It's gorgeous and it's, it's, I love it. But this is all of the garlic that I have for this season. I planted more, a different variety but it didn't sprout at all. And so I'll cover that in my video. In this bed here, I have some black carrots that I'm growing. I forgot the official variety name. I think it's called um, Nebula, but I can look that up and then put it on the screen. I didn't think they were gonna sprout. Carrots can be very finicky to germinate. And so that's the reason why this cabbage ended up there and there. Um, and then I have some lettuce here, some little jam lettuce, some beets, red Russian kale, and spinach. And um, this was a last minute bed, so I'm just trying to figure out how to organize it I put things in and they didn't work out and then things started later and so I just went with it um, but that's what I'm doing with this I'm excited about these carrots this spinach I mean this cabbage it has the the worms are eating it the white butterfly lays their eggs on it, their babies hatch, and then they, um, when the worms, they eat the cabbage. Normally I do companion planting to avoid this, but I do have some BT spray. It's an organic method to keep the bugs from doing this. But like I said, I just put it in here not expecting anything to grow. So now I have cabbage and carrots. But 
I'll do a video on what you can do if you do plant your cabbage and have this kind of problem because it is a common problem if you don't companion your plant. This is all of my broccoli and so these are doing amazing. They look gorgeous. As you can see, no worm, dab no worm damage. Um, there might be slight leaf damage, but we've had some heavy rains, some hail, so it could be due to that. But you can see these plants look amazing. One of the things that you can also see is that this this bed is extremely companion planted and so i have some mint coming back from last year here i have some thyme which is right here some oregano i have some hyssop from last year i have some more thyme over there and then i have some onion right here all of these can be um characterized as aromatic herbs and that that butterfly that cabbage moth doesn't like the smell of of smelly things and so that deters them from laying their eggs on these greens like they typically would and then um that prevents all of the damage without any sprays or any any extra work so this is my preferred method of growing cabbages and any broccoli anything from the brassica family you can see i have some pansies that are coming back but look at this onion i thought i picked them all last year but obviously i didn't it's coming back it's getting ready to flower i'm just gonna let it do its thing see what happens i heard that the most viable onion seeds are from the current season so why not it's doing me a favor by keeping the bugs away from my broccoli so i'm letting it do its thing um i amended this bed with amazing compost earthworm castings those are my normal go-to things and we're about to give it all a good watering today all right so we're here in this other garden the next one and it's totally in progress so it's totally not done um but i have these stakes here there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna be adding four more. And in this plot, I'm gonna be growing all tomatoes. Um, there were some water issues, so I haven't planted all of the tomatoes yet. I do have some planted here. Two different varieties here. They, they look to be doing really well. Um, the water just got fixed yesterday, so finally there's water. And of course, you can't garden without water. And so now I'm going to complete planting and complete this, this plot. Um, it's just a lot of work to have to bring water to water. And then it's so hot and it's just not enough. You can't bring enough water to water efficiently. And these, these guys are in the shade, so that's why... They're probably doing as good as they are because they're not in the sun as much as the rest of the plot would be. Um, these papers and these things we're seeing are not trash. So I use coffee grounds and eggshells and I also keep the filters. So those are my coffee filters. Um, they break down as you can see. And so I just I just leave them here and work them into the, into the plot and in my soil this is just grass that was growing and the same thing I just since it I want whatever it took out of here back into my soil and so I just keep that here it's not a mess it's actually intentional um, these are for a project I'm doing they're thirsty as you can tell but it's a pretty small space but it's a big enough space to grow tomatoes to have enough room in between for airflow um, and of course my favorite lemon balm established plant there what's interesting about this space is that it's down kind of in a hole 
so I have to step down into it to get to it. Um, <clears throat> but um, so this is this is part of where we are. I wasn't gonna fix it up or make it look pretty. This is real. This is how you garden, and sometimes you don't get to control the water, and sometimes there's issues. And this is what it looks like, but it's on, so now I have lots of work to do. Hello, and we're back, and we're at another garden. Um, here is one of the largest plots that I got. I, um, I just received this plot recently, last minute, unexpected. So I don't have very much planned out for it yet, but there's a lot of planning in the works on top of planting that needs to happen but all of that tall grass over there was covered in all of this plot over here i don't know the measurements of this plot but here's the end and it goes all the way to that tall grass and then in between these rocks and this fence and all of this needs to be planted covered in weeds i took the majority of it out with the help of my sister my superstar sister um and then this is what i've been using it for so far <laughs> is a place for my plants that i take to the market to rest in between in between the markets um my house is full of plants and i'm still growing more stuff and i have two markets that i do now and so um it's warm enough at night and during the day, these plants are hardened off, which means that they are not harmed by the sun, but do better. And so they're just growing more and more. And instead of taking up space in my car or trying to juggle them in my house, I leave them here. Um, it's easy to water them. It's easy to be messy with the water and all of that. They're outside. And so this is, this is working out for me for now. Um, like I said, I don't have a plan for this garden yet. Most of the time I literally sketch a, a map and draw what I'm gonna grow where I do a lot of companion planting and that just really helps to make sure that I'm successful, that I have the least amount of pest and disease problems and the most productivity and I, I get the most out of the space that I have. Obviously this is a large space, but it's not a whole yard or a whole garden. And and so for one garden, this would be perfect, but because I'm a market gardener, um, this is, and you know, one, one weekend at a, at a market, and <laughs> this, could, this could be all. And so, this is not this is not enough space just to have one and that's why i have several throughout the city and that's why i'm doing this tour just to show you a lot of people are asking me during the markets where do you grow and how do you do this and where are you located and i'm literally everywhere so this is garden number three and i believe this is plot number five so next week we'll see how much work we've done since this last video hey y'all uh, almost out of light for the day i just wanted to finish this tour um this is one of the <laughs> this is the next garden um one of the these are this is one of the gardens that has some water problems and so um they're trying to get that fixed They've been trying to get that fixed for a while. But as you can see, I have a trellis here. And this one I plan to grow several different varieties of cucumbers on both sides of it. Underneath, I have some Mexican sunflowers, radish, different varieties of lettuce, things that prefer the shade and don't mind the shade and um we'll do better in the shade once the cucumbers get growing one of my favorite lettuces that i have is this dark one i don't know the name the variety but this is so gorgeous to me 
but they all are doing really well and I'm proud of that. My um, seedlings are coming up. The seeds are planted. This one is actually the Armenian yard long. And all along the edges you can see that they're coming. This is my second plot bed in this in this one. Um, I'm growing. I'm. I'll be growing hot peppers in here. I have these jalapenos starting. <clears throat> you can see lots of flowers and lots of peppers coming along. So it's doing pretty good. Given the circumstance of the water issues. So pansy companion plants. These are Anaheim peppers. And once the water situation is fixed in this particular bed, I will have poblano peppers, Anaheim peppers, serrano peppers, and then jalapeno at the end in blocks so this will be covered and peppers peppers love to be planted closely like this from what I learned and they do better this way and um, as you can see this one's not struggling even though I might be thirsty and then this is um some more lights from my mom's house and um, in this bed I actually have amended it with some compost coffee grounds eggshells and then also one of my neighbors new besties gave me some rabbit manure and so I put it in this bed this bed needs lots of love and so I'm hoping to to give it all that it that I can so I can give it back. So far, so good. And here we are at the last one of this tour. <clears throat> there is one last one, um, but that's my private one. And so I'm not gonna show you that one yet. There's actually and honestly nothing to show you there. And so I wanna get this tour done. <laughs> And so I, here I am. But this is the place where I did how to plant tomato video. And here's the trellis. And I ended up planting four tomatoes in here. As you can see how much this one has already grown since I planted it. I haven't pruned it or anything. There's actually some flowers coming on. Um, some basil I put on from seed. I think this one has licorice basil. Everything needs water. It's been really hot lately, but everything has just grown with the heat we've had. Um, this is a basil pot, a variety of different basils. Some more from seed. Looks like there's, they're coming up. Forgot which one I put there. I love all basil, so. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, I put some here, but I don't see any yet. And I also put some here. And there they come. And then all right here, along this side, I put lettuce seed. So mixed salad greens. And as you can see, <laughs> really, coming in, really filling up, and of course another light from my mom's house, <laughs> um, and my mom, she gave, she got a bunch of new ones, and so she gave me all her old ones that still worked, so she knows 
But I like saying that I took it from my mom's house. <laughs> <clears throat> So that's the end of the t my very first 2021 garden tour of all of my gardens. I lost count of how many I was at and how many plots. Um, but I'll, I'll total it up and I'll put it at the, at the end on the screen here so you could see. It was a lot of work to obtain all of these. And then um, it's new for me to have so many and that was part of this journey is to push my own limits and my boundaries and see you know what i can do and see how far i can go with what i have i really believe in turning my my waiting room into my classroom and so and my dream is to have a homestead where i have one place for all of this gardening and all of these types of things taking place um but until then here i am and instead of waiting for that perfect time with the cost of housing and the cost of building and everything else i i am turning my waiting room into a classroom so i'm pushing my limits and my boundaries and i am seeing how far i can go making the mistakes that i need to make to learn and grow on a small scale so when i do obtain my dream i'm ready to take off running and i'm ready to be successful and i'm not wasting the first few years of that dream come true learning on how to be successful i already know what to do as soon as i get the keys to my new place so until then i'll be doing this figuring out how much work it is and being thinking be and be thinking in the back of my mind that one day i won't have to drive all over the city and know so many gate codes and there won't be so many hoses different water issues and different different setups but i'm very grateful for having this these spaces because without them i wouldn't be able to do any of what i'm doing so even though it's a small scale of the big picture, it's a foot in the door or a foot in the garden or a foot in the market or all of the above. It's been so hot. I'm so sweaty and I'm so tired. I need to water this last bed. And as you can see, I have a ton of work to do. Thanks for stopping by.